Affordable direct drive has arrived thanks to Camus with this C5 racing wheel set. If you've got your eye on a similarly priced Logitech wheel like the G923, then you should definitely be considering this as well because if there's one feature that dominates all reviews of wheels in this price range, it's direct drive. But in exchange for this more professional build, did they have to cut some corners? Well, it's time to have a look at the Camus C5. Controllers are amazing. When done well, they make games more fun and realistic, and when done badly, they can actually scare you away from the genre entirely. The C5 is designed to provide you with the experience that more expensive wheels offer, but at the entry-level price that most people are willing to pay for entry-level wheels, like the extremely popular Logitech G29. I love cars, I've featured mine in drive videos on this channel before, and actually buying the Logitech wheel was the perfect introduction for me when getting into sim racing and VR. Now as a quick disclaimer, Camus did send this product to me for the purposes of making this review, but all opinions are entirely my own. They did make one request, however, they asked if I could showcase some gameplay on the Asus ROG Ally, which I'm happy to report works perfectly fine. Now before we can get into the details of whether you should buy the Camus C5 over other entry-level wheels, let's talk about what you actually get in the box. For what appears to be the permanently discounted price of $299, you get the C5 direct drive wheel and the two pedal set. If you plan to mount directly to a dedicated stand, this may be enough, but for most people you'll need the table clamp as well to get it at the right angle, and that will cost you an extra $30. With postage on top of that, you're looking at $350 total, and that's more or less the same price you'd be paying for the Logitech G923, with the biggest difference being that the C5 is direct drive. Setup itself is straightforward enough. The Camus team hasn't spent much time on the manual, so I figured it out, but it's not as smooth as the experience you might get from more established companies. Now the desk clamp works just fine, but it won't clamp to my racing stand without a shim like a book or a piece of wood. I wish I could just remove the clamp portion and use the holes on the base to secure it to the racing stand, but I couldn't find a way to make that work. After you set it up though, you immediately notice the benefit of the C5's unique construction. While most gear-driven or direct drive wheels have a large base, the C5 has all the parts installed inside the wheel itself. This makes the wheel itself quite heavy, but once it's clamped to your desk, this doesn't appear to greatly affect the driving experience. Since you don't have the bulk of a wheelbase in front of the wheel, it means you can get significantly closer to your monitor for some enhanced realism if you don't have a giant 100-inch sim rig. Also, it makes it easier to carry around. Not that I imagine you'll be taking this to any tournaments, unless... Now, I don't have experience with the newer True Force wheel from Logitech, but if it's anything like the earlier G29 that I have, then you should prepare yourself for a huge leap in realism when you try the Camus C5. When I first turned it on and whacked the force feedback up to 100%, I nearly jumped out of my seat because when I tried drifting the wheel spun so fast and powerfully that I thought I was going to injure my thumbs. Since it's a PC only wheel I wasn't able to test any PlayStation games like Gran Turismo 7 so the gameplay you see here is generally from Assetto Corsa. When I initially set it up it didn't find any updates and I thought the wheel was really hard to set up but after I got the software updated I discovered that the default settings with maybe one or two tweaks here and there got it just right. If you're pretty serious about getting into sim racing the sky is the absolute limit when it comes to price and realism but at the bare minimum, a direct drive wheel is going to give you a better way to train your muscle memory so you can focus on more important things like racing strategies or what song to play next. That being said, direct drive may not be your priority. If $350 is the most you're willing to pay, then the Logitech G29 is frequently available at big discounts. When I originally purchased my all-inclusive set, the G29 came with a three-pedal setup and the gear shifter attachment. For sim racing enthusiasts, the C5's paddle shifters and two-pedal setup will be more than enough. But if your aim is to do something like playing GT7 in VR and making it feel like your car in real life, you might want to consider the Logitech wheel instead as an affordable way to get that manual gear shifter and clutch pedal setup. On top of that, many brands offer models that also work with Xbox or PS4 and PS5. The Camus C5, again, is PC only. If you're thinking of the Camus C5 as just the beginning of your setup, then you could probably buy a gear shifter and three pedal setup separately from another company. Personally, I don't have any, so I can't test whether this works though, so for me, I can only judge what comes in the box. Now, when it comes to performance, I found the wheel to be plenty powerful enough, especially since I don't have much experience with wheels other than the Logitech G29 that I've been using. And outside of standard racing, I think the most obvious place this became apparent was when drifting. With my old Logitech wheel, I had to start the drift, then spin the wheel manually to keep the drift going. 
but with the C5, the experience started to look a lot more like those drifting tutorials I found online. In tutorial videos, they always show people starting to drift and then letting the wheel spin freely until they find the right angle so they can hold it in place and drift. This finally works for me now because on the C5, it actually has enough power from the direct drive system to spin the wheel fast enough and make drifting work more like a real car. Now to be very clear, I cruise around in a budget convertible in real life and have never intentionally drifted a real car. So I can only say that it feels easier than before, but whether it's completely like drifting a real car, I'm not completely sure. So drifting is definitely easier to control with the C5, but spinning the wheel is only half the fun. You have to get the car in gear first, and if you're a fan of Initial D or any other drift racing anime, you'll know that downhill drift races involve a lot of heel-toe action. This is something you do because your left foot is busy on the clutch pedal, but with the C5 setup only having two pedals, you probably won't be doing much of that. The other thing is that while taking your hands off the wheel is fun when drifting, the paddle shifters are the only manual control you have over the gearbox, and finding them can sometimes be tricky if the wheel hasn't already centered itself. Maybe there's some clever trick that I don't know about yet, but if you want to feel like you're driving a car in manual, keep in mind that out of the box, the C5 is more focused on standard, hands on the wheel racing. And speaking of racing, how does it feel? Well, coming from the Logitech G29, it's quite a different experience. Where the Logitech provides you with feedback, it's more like a hint. It's just suggesting to you that in real life the wheel would want to go this way or that way, depending on the speed you're going or the friction with the road. The Camus C5, on the other hand, feels, and I genuinely can't think of a better comparison than this, it's like a very strong bodybuilder is standing right in front of me, turning the wheel to match the correct position of the wheel in whatever racing game I'm playing. It's like some twisted arm wrestling game where no matter how hard I turn the wheel, Hulk Hogan here will counteract me. I push a little, he pushes a little back. I push with all my might, and the wrestling champion in front of me laughs in my face and pushes equally hard. Never in my life, before testing the C5, did I ever fear that my controller was just going to jump off my desk and beat me up. The real crazy part to this is that apparently direct drive wheels can go even stronger than this. Who knows, maybe I'll reach a point where more power is actually necessary to get a more realistic feel, but for now, I can't imagine wanting to go any more powerful than what you get here on the C5. Now the steering wheel itself is pretty simple. I don't use all the buttons, but if you need them, there are like 50 million of them dotted all over the front of it. But like I say, for me, I really just want a wheel, gear shifters, and pedals. Talking of which, this is where the C5 has to compromise a bit. The pedals, which you assemble yourself from three different parts, don't feel like the pedals in a real car. The accelerator pedal is fine, I suppose, because there's no need for it to tighten up, but the problem is when you get to the brake pedal, which feels exactly the same. In a real car, the brake pedal is light at first, but it gets progressively stiffer the further you press it. Supposedly, this helps you build muscle memory since you only need to push it a little for some corners and all the way down for reducing speed rapidly. There are more advanced techniques as well, but whatever it is, these pedals kind of destroy the illusion that you're in a real car. Again, you might be able to plug separate pedals in, but I don't have a setup like that, so I can't confirm whether it works. If all you have is what comes in the box with the C5 wheel and pedal set, then keep in mind that you'll have to mod these pedals or wait for someone else to make a mod if you want a pedal setup that matches the realism of the wheel. But being a relatively less well-established company, I feel like some of the headaches kind of hurt this experience. For example, I couldn't really get the wheel to work properly in Car X drift racing. Either I'm just really bad at it, or the wheel just won't drive without spinning me out of control. And then there's the weirdness of trying to get Forza Horizon 5 to work. The wheel seems to be detected by the game, but it's not recognized properly, and so it just doesn't really work. Now I found this cryptic website on the official Camus page that asks you to download an installer, but that didn't work either. The instructions say to disable your antivirus software to complete the installation, something that always rubs me the wrong way because most games and accessories I install don't ask me to do this. Anyway, I caved in and disabled my antivirus to install it, and to be honest, it still failed. But apart from those headaches, I'm impressed by the Camus C5 as a newcomer to the world of sim racing. Is it leaps and bounds above the wheel on the Logitech G29? Absolutely. But does that mean that the C5 is going to satisfy other casual racers like me? To be really honest with you, this is kind of a workaround purchase. If you're dead set on a direct drive wheel because of the benefits they offer, the C5 is probably a very good deal and in most cases much more affordable than what the other options are in this range. But if you're like me and you want to play on console and you also want features like a manual gear shifter and a clutch pedal so it feels like you're in a real car, you might still find that actually the Logitech options are still well worth a look. The Camus is probably better suited to people who are a little braver with the tech side and willing to build or find solutions to make things work when the provided software isn't quite cutting it. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Subscribe if you loved it, like the video, and check out this next video here if you want to see more options for sim racing controllers. I've been Nihongo Gamer, I'll see you real, real soon.